really smart. Think you've got them? Find out now. As you may know, I pounded the pavement looking for ordinary schmoes and tested their street smarts by asking basic questions about the world around them. It will be up to our players to determine who's got it going on and who's a few wontons short of a poo-poo platter. And speaking of players, let's meet him. We have Alicia. And hello, Mike. Mike, who's going to win the game? Yeah. All right. Now remember, it's dog eat dog here on Street Smarts. The winner keeps the loot and the loser gets the boot. She's barking at me. Now let's meet the three people they'll be making snap judgments about. I stopped in Sin City where Cristal showed me how to get freaky. So Cristal, where are you from and what do you do? Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm a research associate. A research associate. What does that mean? I do survey questions over the phone. Oh, okay. So Cristal, I, I love your outfit. It looks like uh, from the side there uh, that you have no underwear on. No panties. You have no panties. Free ball. <laughs> I understand you're a freak when you dance. <laughs> yes. Can you show some of your dancing? Oh, go, oh, go, oh my God. Mom, I'm sorry. Yeah. Back up, hang up. <laughs> and forget about that mess we called an election. I'm voting for John. So where are you from and what do you do? I'm from Topeka, Kansas, and I don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what would your dream job be? Dream job, I'll oh, probably be president of the United States. Oh, wow, that's what you're going now. If you were president, what law would you pass? Free sex of everybody. Free sex. Free sex for everybody. No more paying for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No more paying for John, no more paying for me. Let's hear a little Elvis. Treat me like a fool. Treat me, mini crew. <laughs> Sounded more like Elvis Costello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's John. Finally, I shot the bull with Osby. Now, Osby, where are you from? Uh, Albuquerque. New Mexico? Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Uh, my favorite movie, um, Tombstone. Tombstone? Tombstone. I'll be your Huckleberry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music do you like to listen to? Um, R&B and, and hip hop stuff. Who do you like? Uh, Tupac. Tupac. I told you, <laughs> George Strait too. Yeah, country's good. George Strait? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Randy <laughs> Travis. <laughs> Big country yeah. music fan? Oh, uh, it's all right. I like it. Okay. <laughs> all right, there's Osby. It's time to play a little game we like to call Who Knew It? We have the same question to all three people in the field. And our player's challenge is to guess who answered the question right. You will lock in your choice, and a correct guess is going to get you 100 bucks, guys, all right? So let's get the ball rolling. Here's the first question I asked to Cristal, John, and Osby. I asked all three, what is monogamy? Who knew it, guys? Flip up your paddles. Let me know who knew it. Do you think it was Cristal, John, or Osby? Knew the answer to that one. All right. Okay, okay, you're both locked in pretty quick. You're both going with uh, Cristal on this one now. Al Alicia, you think Cristal knows? I'm stuck. Well, she doesn't look like she'd know, but okay. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna All go right, well, with before the Before we check in with her, let's see what John had to say. What is monogamy? It's something that you make in the kitchen with a pie and stuff like that. Sort of something you can eat, monogamy. Sure, sure. What's your favorite thing to eat? Besides peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Uh, I like jello. Jello. There's always room for jello. Always room for jello. Thank you, John. All right, guys, we're gonna see if Cristal knows for both of you. 100 bucks if she does. What is monogamy? Not having sex with nobody else. Just having sex with what? Your partner, your wife. Yeah. That, that. You believe in monogamy? No. You want to have sex with multiple people? Yes. How many sexual partners have you had? Three. Just three? Three at one time. Oh. Including me, that's four. That's enough. <laughs> she got it right. You both had Cristal. Way to go, guys. A hundred bucks each. I know. You're a little freaky in Vegas. All right, here's the next question, guys. In Billy Madison, what must Adam Sandler do to inherit the family fortune? Who knew it? Do you think it was Crystal John or Osby knew that one? Okay, and Mike's making his... Uh, okay, you're both locked in. You both think Osby knows. Now, Mike, you think he's going to know this one? I think this guy watches a lot of movies because okay. I know he's not home reading a book. All right, you both once again with the same person, but before we check in with Osby, let's see what John had to say once again. In Billy Madison, what must Adam Sandler do to inherit the family fortune? Oh, you got to... Go out with his uh, sister. Got to go out with his sister? <laughs> yeah. Where was this movie uh, filmed? Down in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. That's <laughs> almost his hometown. All right, guys, let's see if we can get you another 100 bucks, see if Osby knows the answer. In Billy Madison, what must Adam Sandler do to inherit the family fortune? Uh, he has to complete school from uh, grades kindergarten all the way to 12th. Okay. Does he do it? Yeah. It's a happy movie. Yeah. He got it right. To finish high school and grade school. 
Stop looking at me, Swan. <laughs> okay, um, last question of the round, guys. You each have 200. You're both perfect so sure. far. Let's see if we can go three for three here. I asked all three, what is a Kino girl? What is a Kino girl? Do you think they got that, uh, who got that right? Do you think it was Crystal, John, or Osby? Could do that one. All right, let's see. Wow, you guys, uh, it's like you're copying off each other. You're both locked in. You both think John. I mean, it's been working for you. Before we check in with John, we're going to see if Osby, uh, just for fun, we want to see what he said. What is a Kino girl? Is that like a, uh, that's a nice way to say hooker. <laughs> a Kino girl is a, a nice hooker? Yeah. <laughs> Alicia, you think John's gonna come through for you? Oh, he's from Kansas, baby. Come right. through to Let's me, John. Let's see if we can get a perfect score for both of you in round one. What is a Kino girl? A Kino girl is a girl that goes around hollering, Kino, Kino. <laughs> That's a correct answer. You both had John. Wow, nice job, guys. You both had him. You got it right. Uh, the correct answer, a woman hired to collect Kino cards in a casino. Nice job. Let's recap the scores. Like I said, uh, perfect score. Alicia, $300. <laughs> Mike, also $300. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Don't go away. Our players will try to figure out who blew it when we return. What is John Wilkes Booth famous for? Inventing the telephone. Invented the telephone. <laughs> Thank God for him, right? Booth. Telephone oh. booth. Invented the phone booth. Thank God. Yeah. Not the telephone. <laughs> back to Street Smarts, folks. Let's meet our players. We have Alicia here. Now, Alicia, ah. you have a little uh, New York mugging story. Ah, got it's it. got a funny ending. What's the way? Yeah. So this guy was obviously following me. So I got pissed, and I walked up to him, and I was like, what? And he's shaking, and you know, he's like, give me all your money. And it's obvious that he's got his hand in the gun shape. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I just turned around and walked off and left him there devastated, which is what I'm going to do to you. Oh, yeah. damn. All right. Oh, nice. oh. No, 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 no. I'm like, you have an impression you do of Bullwinkle. Oh, dear. Let's do it. Let's hear it. Oh, dear. I was on Street Smarts, Frank. You interviewed me and asked me some silly questions. Well, I have one for you. If a fire means business can go up in smoke and a plumber's business can go down the drain, can a hooker get laid off? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That was very nice, Mike. I'll see you in the funny mode. All right, nice job. Yeah. It's time to separate the men from the boys as we start our next round. Who blew it? This time we ask the same question, only two of our Boulevard Brainiacs, one answered right, one answered wrong. Each time Alicia or Mike correctly identifies which Brainiac blew the question, they get $200, studio audience. And you guys can get an extra 200 bucks by using the dunce cap. Here's how. When you hear a question you think will stymie your opponent, slap the buzzer on your chair and dunce them. If they cannot answer the question, you get $200. And remember, there's only one dunce in the round, so use it carefully. Okay, guys, here's the first question I asked to both Cristal. No freaky girl, and John. Oh dear. In the 1993 movie Indecent Proposal, what proposal was considered indecent? So flip up your paddles and tell me who blew it, guys. Do you think it was Crystal or John? Okay, and of course, uh, of course it would be the same thing. You're both locked in with John. Stop it. Yeah, I know. Cover your answers up. All right, so uh, Mike, you think John blew this? Uh, mainly, I'm just trusting that Crystal knows what an indecent right, proposal there you is. Go. All right, so let's see if Mike blew or John blew it. In the 1993 movie Indecent Proposal, what proposal was considered indecent? When the man walked up to another man and asked him, will you marry me? Will you marry me? And that's it. You both had Johnny blew it. $200 for each of you. We still got a perfect game going. Now, if you guys want to know the real answer, Cristal knows it. In the 1993 movie Indecent Proposal, what proposal was considered indecent? He wanted to screw his wife. <laughs> what do you mean? Who did? <laughs> Who won the screw all boys? Why? Right. And how much, what was going to happen? Four million bucks. Right. Um, That's right. Would you do that? What if, like, your husband said, look, this guy's going to give us a million bucks if you sleep with him. Would you do it? Hell yeah, I'd do it for 5,000. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right, here's the next question I asked. Uh, there's a question to Crystal and Osby. I asked them both, who are Penn and Teller? Who blew it? What do you think? Who did not know who they were? Do you think it was Crystal? Uh, who with five grand, you can get a lot, and Osby. Okay, oh my God, you finally have a difference of opinion. You're both locked in. Uh, you're both thinking differently on this one. Uh, Alicia, you think Crystal is the one who blew it? Oh, look at Crystal. Okay. I mean, come on. Penn and Teller. All right, let's find out if we can get you 200 bucks. Crystal, who are Penn and Teller? Penn and Teller? Tennis ball makers. Tennis ball makers? <laughs> <laughs> Penn, I play with pens, right. Never played with the Tellers, but all right. She blew it, way to go, Alicia. You keep your perfect streak alive, you have to set 
seven hundred. Mike, it looks like Osby's the one who got it right. Let's see what he says. Who are Penn and Teller? Uh, they're, they're um, they're they're magicians. They're they're magicians. I'm sorry, Mike, you got it right, Penn and Teller. All right. Here's the last question of the round, guys. This one was to John and to Osby. I asked uh, both of them. Finish the saying. All that glitters is not. Hmm. So what do you think, guys? Who blew it? You think uh, John or Osby blew that one? Okay, and uh, okay, you're locked in. Yeah, we didn't use a dunce in this round. All right, that's cool. Uh, let's see, you think Osby blew this, huh, Mike? Osby is a moron. Look at the hat. Oh, all right, well, let's, let's find out. Finish the saying, all that glitters is not made of gold. Ha-ha! He got it right, did he? Yeah, all right, looks like, uh, it looks like John's the one who blew it for Alyssa. Let's watch. Finish the saying, all that glitters is not all that glitter is not for real. It's not for real. It glitters, it could be something fake. Sure. Usually, I mean, you know, you get fake gold, it, it glitters, yeah. it's not gold. Uh, yeah, it could be that paper mache stuff. <laughs> John Blue, way to go, Alicia. There you go, you got 200 more bucks. Let's recap the scores here. Mike, you got $500, very nice. But Alicia, two perfect rounds, $900. Very nice. Now that our players think they know these thoroughbreds up here, we'll see who they choose to ride when we come back. For many years, this country feared the red menace. What's the red menace? Ants. Ants. And I have, a, I have a total phobia for ants. Ants, oh God. Little red ones that crawl up you? Oh, yeah. Bite you, bite you. <laughs> Welcome back. Size up the jockeys and place your bets because it's time to pick your pony. This time, Alicia and Mike will each choose one of the three street subjects for the entire round and try to guess how they'll answer three questions. A correct prediction is worth 300 bucks in round three, ladies and gentlemen. And we're gonna leave the dunce cap in the round so you can even try to win more money because it's worth 300 bucks this round. Now, the player who is trailing chooses first. Mike, that's you. Yeah. So who would you like to pony up with? I want John. John is my man, thank you very much. Go John, thank you very much, very nice. And Alicia, how about oh, you? Oh, Crystal all the way! Go, go Crystal, all right. Uh, okay, Mike, here's the first question to John. How do you play footsie? Do you think he got that right or wrong? What do you think? I think he got it right. All right, if you predicted this right, you'll get 300 bucks and you'll only be uh, trailing by 100 bucks. So let's uh, wish you luck. John, how do you play footsie? You take your shoes off and you put your foot up to your partner's foot and you kind of just rub footsies a little bit and now uh, you kind of get a little. You're actually doing it to me right oh, now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He got it right. Way to go, Mike. Yeah, that's for you. How about those legs on me? How pathetic was that? All right, Alicia, here's the first question to Cristal for the round. If someone says you're malodorous, what are they saying about you? Oh, the baby got it wrong. <laughs> she got it wrong. All right, oh. let's see if we can keep your perfect streak alive here. If someone says you're malodorous, what are they saying about you? You're rude. You're rude? Anyone ever say that about you? You're malodorous? No, I've never heard that one. Actually, mal malodorous means you, you smell bad. Oh, hell no. <laughs> How about me, am I all right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you are right. <laughs> she got it wrong. Way to go, Alicia. Let me your best for you. Takes up to 1,200. She's on fire here, Mike. You got to keep up with her. You're doing good, though, too. So here's the next question I asked to John. What does it mean if you're in the black? Do you think he got that right or wrong? Oh, you've been done, Alicia. Mike, throw it up there. $300 on the line, Alicia. I'm going to read the question one more time. You got five seconds to answer it. What does it mean if you're in the black? Please tell me it means that you're bankrupt. <laughs> no, the car crash, you're wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, Alicia. The 300 bucks oh, goes yeah. to Mike. Way to go, Mike. Makes it a close game. He's only selling by 100. All right, now, Mike, what do you think? Do you think John got this right or wrong? So wrong. <laughs> uh, I think John got it wrong, too. Think you got it wrong, too? All right, let's find out. What does it mean if you're in the black? If you're in the black, that means that you done lost everything you got. Uh -oh. What about you? You're not in the black. You're still in the red. No, I'm in the, I'm in the pink. <laughs> you're in the pink. I love pink. Oh. He got it wrong. Way to go, Mike. Save a bunch for you. You just took the lead. You made 600 bucks off that I question. I got you. I the working for me. It means you're profitable. You're making money. Oh. So there you go. You thought you got the opposite there, Alicia. All right. Then, Don't worry. You can retake the lead here if you predict right. this one right to Crystal. In the movie Jerry Maguire, what was Cuba Gooding Jr. famous for telling Tom Cruise to show him? Oh. What do you think? Show me the money, Crystal. Right. Okay. All right. Let's see if she, <laughs> she got it right for you. In the movie Jerry Maguire, what was Cuba Gooding Jr. famous for telling Tom Cruise to show him? Show me the money. <laughs> he was bouncing around. Show, give me a nice cloud. Show me the money. money. Loud. Show me the money. Louder. <laughs> Show me the money. 
<laughs> she got it right. Let's show you the money. He takes up the $15. Yeah. You're back into the lead, Alicia. Nice job. Okay, uh, Mike, this is the last question of the round for you to, uh, to John. I asked John in, the, in, uh, let me try, in his song, what did Elvis repeatedly ask you not to step on? Think he got that right? We got a high scoring game going here. <laughs> you know John got that right. You think he got you that? You know he got that right. Why? Because he looks he's like. He's into Elvis. Right. He thinks he's Elvis. Did, did, Elvis, ever, Elvis. did Elvis ever wear a wife beater? Is my question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. In his song, what did Elvis repeatedly ask you not to step on? His bunions, but his blue suede shoes. His blue suede shoes. There you go. Blue, blue. Blue suede shoes. Yeah, you can do anything. <laughs> he got it. I'm out of here. Go ahead. <laughs> He got it right. Way to go, Mike. Blue suede shoes. That was my team. Let's try to make a king impression. All right, that gives you, uh, you have 1,700 bucks now, Mike. Alicia, you got 1,500 bucks. This is a high-scoring game. Someone could really win a lot of money here today. This is the last question of the round. This goes to you, Alicia. So if you get this prediction right, you're going to take the lead into the final round. So this is key. I asked Crystal, if you're considered a VIP, what do the letters VIP stand for? Oh, do me right, Crystal. Well, you think she'll get this right? Oh, do me right. All right, let's find out. <laughs> If you're considered a VIP, what do the letters VIP stand for? Valuable, valuable, important person, I think. Very important person. Very important person, okay. She got it wrong, I'm sorry, Alicia, she was so yes. close. No credit at for you on that one. The correct answer, very important oh, person, good. or a really fun show to watch on Saturday afternoon with him. And <laughs> okay, all right, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's recap this question. Alicia, you got $1,500. Let's start a score. With uh, $1,700, uh, Mike's in the lead. Now, when we return, Alicia and Mike will be making a final prediction on a question I asked to Crystal, John, and Osby. I asked them, what is a teetotaler? Stay tuned, because one of our players will be pushing up daisies in our final round. The wager Don't go away. We'll be right back. Alicia and Mike, here's what's happening. During the break, each of you secretly chose one of the three people out on the street, made a prediction as to whether they were right or wrong, and wagered an amount of money not to exceed the total you now have. We've got some big totals here. Alicia's got $1,500. Yeah. Mike's got $1,700. Yeah. With that key pick your pony round, took the lead. Now remember, only the winner gets out of here with any cash, which means it all this comes down to this final question. And here's the question I asked to Cristal, John, and Osby. I asked them, what is a teetotaler? All right, Alicia, you had the lead for most of the game there. He snuck up at the end, took the lead in the third round. Who do you want to go with and try to retake your lead and win some money? No whammies, baby. No whammies. You're going to go with Crystal. Mm -hmm. Mike, how about you with a slight lead? You're going to go with Osby. All right, nobody picked my man John, so we'll see you later, John. Now, uh, this is it. 1500 bucks. This is your last clip to see. Crystal, let's see it. What is a teetotaler? Count your coins. Count your coins? <laughs> what do you count your coins? Teetotaler? Yeah, teetotaler. <laughs> Okay, that's a wrong answer, Alicia. You have 1,500 bucks. She got it wrong. Did you say she'd get it wrong? I said she got it you wrong. You said she'd get it wrong. And how much of your $1,500 did you wager? Oh, girl, you're big time. She's up to $3,000. That gives you the lead. Nice job, Alicia. I like the girl who goes, uh, goes all the way there. Nice job. Well, I meant like goes for it all. Okay. All right, Mike, you have Osby. Let's see if you can retake your lead and win the game. Let's find out. What is a teetotaler? A teetotaler? Isn't that like a butler who like, carries tea? Right. He's toting tea. Yeah, teetotaler. Okay. <laughs> all right, that is also a wrong answer. A teetotaler is someone who doesn't drink alcohol, much like uh, our studio audience. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Now, Mike, you had Osby. You're trailing now because she uh, she went with all. She went for all of it. He got it wrong. What did you say he would do? You said he would get it wrong. All right. Now, Mike, this is a very exciting moment here. You needed to wage more uh, wager more than thirteen hundred dollars to win. Did you go big? What happened? Let's see. How much did you wager? He wagered $16.99, yeah. gives him 